Hare. We are going to discuss today some properties of factors. So before starting with that, we need to understand what is the meaning of this word factor. There is a similar term known as multiples. So we need to understand what is the difference between these factors and multiples. Let's take an example of a number. Say if I take a number uh, 15. So what will be smallest factor of 15? So factor are the numbers which divide the number completely. So at present I'm writing the factors of number 15. So smallest factor or smallest number which will divide this number completely is 1. Then next is 2 doesn't divide 15. Then 3 divides 15. Then 4 doesn't divide. 5 does, divides this number. And after this 15 divide this number completely. And it's obvious that no number greater than 15 can divide this number 15 completely. So for this number 15, number of factors are 4 and these are the factors. So they are limited in quantity. Now, if I think of these multiples, so what are the multiples? So multiples are the numbers which can be obtained by multiplying this number with some integer. So smallest multiple of this number 15 will be 15 times 1, that is 15. After that, 15 times 2, it will be 30. 15 times uh, 3, that is 45 and so on. So there is no limit to the number of multiples. So that is a basic difference between these two numbers, factors and multiples. So number of factors are limited. So they have some properties also. So we are going to discuss some properties of factors in this video. So what are the properties of factors? So let's take another number. Uh, I'm taking say 60. So for this number 60, we have just discussed what are the factors. The numbers which divide this number completely, they will be called as factors of this number. So smallest number which divide the 60 completely is 1. We are talking only of positive integers so far. So next number which will divide the 60 completely is 2. Then 3 also divide this number. Then 4. And after this 5 also divide this number. Then 6. After that, 7 doesn't divide this number. 8, no. 9, no. Uh, then 10. Yes, 10 divide this number completely. After this, 11, no. 12, yes. 13, 14, 15 divide this number. And 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 divide this number. And after this, uh, 21, 22, 23, no. Now 30 will divide this number. And after this, 60 will divide this number. Oh, this looks like an Herculean task. Uh, uh, someone may doubt that isn't it that we have gone a little bit fast here? Maybe we have skipped some numbers in between. So no. Uh, I've written all the factors of this number 60. So there's an important pattern we have to observe here that when 2 is a factor of 60, means 2 divides 60 completely. So when 2 divides 60, what will be remaining? What will be the quotient? It will be 30. And 30 will also divide this number 60. So 30 is also there in the list. Similarly for 3, when 3 divides this number 60, so what will be the quotient? It will be 20. So 20 is also a divisor of this number 60. So this is also in the list of these factors. So that's how all these factors when combined we get this pattern that 1 has a partner 60. So 1 divides this, this number. So 60 is also a factor of this number. Similarly, 2 is also a factor. And with 2, we have 30 as a partner. With 3, we have this 20. With 4, we have this 15. With this 5, we have 12. And with this 6, we have 10. Which means uh, whenever the two numbers of this pairing, they are multiplied together, they will give the number itself. Like the 6 into 10 will give 60. 5 into 12 will give 60. 4 into 15 will give 60 and so on. So with this discussion so far, uh, we can understand that for each factor, we'll be having the pattern like this of all the factors when the factors are written in increasing or decreasing order. So is this true for this number 15 also? Let's check. For this number 1, its partner should have been what? 15? Yes, we have 1 and 15, they are the partners. Similarly, for 3 and 5, yes, they also, when multiplied, they give the number 15. So far, we have concluded, we can see easily that all the factors when written in order, either increasing or decreasing, so they uh, appear in this pattern that uh, first, last, second, second, last, third, third, last, and so on. When they are multiplied, they give the number itself. So can we conclude that uh, total number of factors of a number uh, are even in quantity? Some of you might think like that. But let's take another example. If I check the number 36. So for this number 36, smallest factor will be what? Obviously it is 1. And what will be its partner? Its partner is going to be 36. Let me write it uh, here in this way. It's 36. And after that, second factor will be 2. And its partner is going to be 
18. And next one is 3. Its partner is going to be 3 times 12 gives you 36. So it is 12. And then 4 is also going to be a factor of this number. And 4's partner will be 4 times 9 gives you 36. And after that, uh, I have 6. And 6 partner is going to be 6. But do I need to write 6 2 times? No. So here is the clue. So uh, because 6 had a partner of 6 only, because this number 36 is a square number, it is 6 square. So in case of square numbers, the square root is to be written only once. All other factors are appearing in pairs. So I can safely conclude from here that in case of a perfect square, the square root of the number is the middle factor. It is exactly in between in the list of the factors, which means number of factors of a square number is odd in quantity. That's one conclusion. And also it's square root because it is in exactly in middle. So number of factors of this square number which are lesser than its square root and which are more than its square root, they will be in equal quantity, isn't it? So let's take a, uh, let's take a small question. So I've written here is what is the seventh largest factor of this number 3600? So, so far we haven't understood, we haven't uh, uh, found the total number of factors of a number. So, but still, can we answer this question? It's seventh largest factor of this number. You can pause the video and think for a while. Okay, so let's discuss now. So this is the 7th largest factor of this number. So if I am going to write all the factors of this number, it is going to be a long list. But because I am looking for the 7th largest factor, so uh, don't you think that it must be a partner of the 7th smallest factor of this number? So let me write the factors of this number. So smallest factor of this number 3600 is going to be 1. And its partners obviously will be 3600. Let me write it below it only. Because uh, the product of the two numbers should have been the number 3600 as we have discussed in earlier cases also. So second factor is going to be 2, its partner will be what? 1800 of course, Let we will write that later. So the third factor will be 3 and uh, 4 also divide this number, then 5 also divide this number, then we have 6 divide this number, yes, 7 doesn't divide this number and after that does 8 divide this number? 8, yes 8 also divide this number. And this 8 is the 7th smallest factor. So that means the factor which you are looking for, 7th largest factor, is just going to be the partner of this number 8. So how I will get that number? I just need to see that what number should be multiplied with this 8 to give me 3600. Or in other words, I just need to divide this 3600 with 8. So 8 falls uh, 32, remaining is uh, 4, and then 8 fives are 40 and 0. So this is the 7th largest factor of this number 3600. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.